circuit and Tabata class. So we're going to mix weight exercises with sliding exercises. Uh, so for equipment, you're going to need a slider. If you're doing it on hardwood floors and using a dish towel, you can get away with just using one. For some exercises, we'll just need one foot or one hand on it. And then for others, we'll need both feet on it, but you can just switch between having it like this, both feet, and then having it folded for just one foot. If you're using paper plates on carpet or those plastic disc gliders, you will want two because again, we do have to put both feet on them for one of the moves. And then you're also gonna need a set of weights. Go heavy with them, but not your max heavy weight, okay? So I'm using a set of 15 pounds. You might wanna have a drop set available as well for the upper body work. Um, 15 pounds is gonna be a little heavy for me, but I want the challenge. If you have access to multiple weights, so maybe have a set that's like, five pounds lighter, uh, just in case you need that. If you're new to circuit and Tabata classes, class is basically broken up into four chunks, two circuits, two Tabatas. In the circuit, today I'm gonna give you four exercises. They're including some unilateral work, so it'll be four exercises and we'll go through it four times, alternating right and left. First circuit will be upper body and core focused today. Second circuit will be lower body focused. For the Tabatas, I'm going to give you two exercises and you alternate between them using an interval structure of 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest for eight sets. Again, the first one will be more upper body core focused. The second one will be lower body focused. And I forgot to explain the structure of the circuit. So for each of the four exercises, you do them for 45 seconds. I'm going to give you either 10 or 15 seconds of transition time in between them, just so that you can get the equipment you need and make any adjustments to your setup. But don't think of it as rest. You're pretty much moving one exercise right into the next. When you complete all four, then you recover before repeating. And in between each of the four chunks of class, I'm gonna give you a full minute to recover, maybe a little longer. And during that time, I'll give you a preview of the upcoming exercises. Not a lot of jumping around at all in this class. When we do add in jumping, I'll have a low impact modification playing on the screen. Um, so if you wanna keep this one all low impact, this is an easy class to do so. Other ways to modify, go lighter with your weights. And if there are other modifications, I will give them verbally as we go. And we'll start class with a guided warm up focused on mobility and some light cardio. And we'll finish up class with a guided cool down. You don't need any equipment for our warm up. Let's get right into that and we can start standing. Let's start with a standing cat cow variation. Uh, hands behind your head, elbows wide, neutral through the pelvis. And we're gonna stay neutral through the pelvis as we do this. On an inhale, we're gonna find spinal extension. So you're gonna open up through the chest, elbows go wide, gaze shifts up, but you're kind of cradling your head in your hands. And then as you exhale, you're gonna round forward. The round, the flexing and extending is really coming from your mid spine and your upper spine. So we're staying pretty neutral through the lumbar spine and neutral through the pelvis. Exhale, round up and over. Inhale, open up. Two more. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. And then I want you to stack the spine back up to neutral, keeping your hands where they are. We're gonna do a little shoulder mobility drill. From here, we're just gonna straighten our arms. They go up in a Y shape. You're gonna sweep the arms down. As you do, you're gonna flip the palms, bend the elbows, bring the hands behind your back. Kind of like picture someone's putting handcuffs on you. Bad visual, but it's all I can think of. Straighten the arms back up. And then as you sweep, flip the palms forward, bend the elbows at the top. So we're mobilizing through the shoulder joint here. Noticing, are you flaring open through the rib cage? Try not to do that. You wanna stay open through the chest and you don't wanna be jutting your neck forward to accommodate the movement. Sweep, flip the palms, bend the elbows. It doesn't matter how high up your back, your hands get, maybe they just come to your butt. Let's do just one more. And then from here, we're gonna come into a side bend. One arm is gonna sweep up as the other circles down and then just take it up and over to the other side, kind of swinging the arms, getting in some lateral flexion through the side body. One more each side. And then both arms reach up. We're gonna add in a hip hinge as your hips hinge back, arms are going to sweep back, stay open through the chest, reach the tailbone long, come upright, arms sweep up overhead. 
we're at the time of year where it's we we're on the cusp of needing to put our air conditioner back in the window, but we haven't quite yet. So my apartment is so stuffy right now. I can already tell I'm going to be drenched in sweat. Like before the warm up, the warm up is even done. <laughs> Hold your hinge, guys. Just those arms sweeping back and up, <sighs> maintaining the connection to your abdominal wall so the ribs don't flare open. Length through the back of the neck. We're going to switch this to a reverse fly. Stay in your hinge. Palms face each other. Three, two. One, palms face in, arms reach forward, and out to reverse fly. So when we're doing this, we're focusing on what the scapula are doing, your shoulder blades. They're retracting as the arms open up, they're sliding in towards each other, gliding across the back of your rib cage. Hands are gonna come to heart center. We're gonna drop to a squat. We'll do a little squat hinge combo. Three, fly for two, and one, hands can come to heart center. You might need to widen your stance a smidge. Drop into your squat position, chest is lifted, stand up tall. We hip hinge, we drop to a squat, we stand. Next time you're in your squat, you're gonna hold for me. Pause. Now you're not in your deepest squat possible. What we're gonna do is squat, we're gonna stand into a hip circle. We can start with the right leg. So as you stand, big hip circle like you're stepping up and over something on the right side, land back in your squat and then take it over to the left and just keep alternating, mobilizing through that hip joint. Across midline, out and around. One more each side. We're gonna come into butt kickers next, do some light cardio. All right, and butt kickers. So you're just running it out, bringing your heel in towards your butt. If you don't wanna run it out, you can march instead. So we'll do three moves in this little mini cardio session. Goal is just to bring the heart rate up gradually, build some heat in the body. But again, there's not a ton of jumping in class today, so we're not going to make it super intense in the warm up. We're gonna take it to jumping jacks. We're gonna do a cross jack. So your feet are gonna crisscross. Arms are gonna do a chest fly in three, two, one. So we open, close, open, close. Modification is a step jack side to side, one arm at a time. Third and final movement is gonna be a sliding side lunge with a twist. Opposite hand towards opposite foot in three, two, one. So wide stance, you're gonna bend into one knee, opposite hand reaches towards it, slide across, twist other way. We're gonna start at the top with butt kickers in three, two, one, run it out. Pump the arms. Back to cross jacks in three, two, one. Side lunge with a twist in three, two, one. Stay active through your inner thighs as you slide side to side so that as you slide, the knee doesn't go out. It stays tracking in line with your toes. We're gonna pivot over to the right, hands to the inside of that right foot in a lizard lunge position for world's greatest stretch. In three, two, one. Walk those hands over to the right. Left leg is straight, right foot is planted, hands on the inside. Now take that inside right hand, twist it open to the ceiling, replace it to the mat. Step your right foot back, left foot stays forward, steps forward, other side. Just alternating as you go, over to the right, and the left. One more time each side. Step to plank, hips up, downward facing dog. We're just gonna finish with a couple inchworms. So keeping your legs straight, you're gonna walk your hands in towards your feet, and then you're gonna walk your hands out to plank. Twice more. If you're really tight through the hamstrings, then definitely give me a little bend to the knees. Last time, walk it in, walk it out to plank, 
And this time we walk it in and roll all the way up to standing, vertebrae by vertebrae. And I'm gonna show you our first circuit. First exercise, you're gonna be in a kneeling hinged position. If it bothers your knees though, you can totally do it standing. Palms face forward, it's three reverse grip rows. You hold the third one and then you just come upright for a little isometric challenge for the biceps. Hinge back into the row, give me another three. Second exercise, you're in a high plank position. One foot is on the glider. It's going to be a row just on one side. And then we're going to do, it's like a windshield wiper slide of the knee. You come across to the opposite elbow, swish it to the same elbow and take it back. Like a big circle, almost think like wax on, wax off. From there, we come into a kneeling kind of open lunge position and we're going to isolate one arm. We're going to do a single arm bicep curl. We finish by putting both feet on the glider in a side plank position and it's going to be a sliding knee tuck in that side plank alignment. Top hand can be on the floor in front of you for support because this is definitely a tough one. Advanced though, you can take it off the ground and have it reaching up to the ceiling or behind your head. Because there is some adjusting with using the gliders, not using the gliders, using one, both, no weights, I'm gonna give you 15 seconds of transition time in between each, each exercise so that you don't have to rush the setup. All right, let's go. So notice my mat setup, I have it this way so that I have room to glide back here and then I can use the mat for padding for my hands or my knees. We're gonna start with that reverse grip row, so you're gonna need both weights to start. Palms are going to face forward. So we're kneeling. From here, you're gonna hinge the hips back, staying long and neutral through the spine, open through the chest, so don't let the shoulders roll forward. Three rows, hold, and then come upright. Let's go, row. Pull the elbows back and up. On the third one, hold the row, squeeze the glutes, come upright, isometric hold for the biceps, and then hinge it back. Three, resist on the way down, hold your third one, come upright. So back and biceps working here. Up next, you're just gonna need one weight, so you'll put the other one off to the side. All right, put one weight off. You're going to keep the weight on your left hand and you're gonna put your left foot on the glider and then I want you to come into a plank with a wide stance with your feet. So from here, it's gonna be row on your left side, place it down and then the left knee is gonna to slide to the right, swish over to the left and it's going to extend back. One row, one kind of wax on, wax off, slide and crunch. When you do the row, try to keep your hips level. A great modification up for this one would be to be in a bear plank position. You would do that row, and then you would just step back to the high plank for that crunch. We'll keep the weight in the left hand up next. Okay, so you don't need the glider. Left foot steps forward so you're mirroring me. Left arm is on the inside of this thigh, so we're in kind of an open lunge position. Hinge forward with the torso, bicep curl. Isolating that left arm. So you wanna make sure that you're going heavy enough with the weight that it, this is a challenge. Try not to swing the weight. Stay open through the chest, connected to the abdominals. <laughs> Squeaky, what are you doing? We won't need the weight up next, okay? We'll be in a side plank. Left forearm will come down. Both feet will be on your glider. Fifteen pounds was ambitious for me. <laughs> oh, all right, put the weight down. So you're in a left side plank, both feet on the glider. So I'm just gonna make my towel wide like that. Left forearm down, stagger your feet. So right in front of left, heels are lifted. You're on the balls of the feet. You're gonna slide the knees in and you're gonna extend them out. Your right fingertips can be on the mat for support. If you are advanced, try it with your right arm reaching up to the ceiling. Hips stay lifted as you do this. Good. 
Keep reaching those hips up. To modify, I want you to plant your top right foot on the ground and just slide in that bottom left knee, okay? Or you can always just hold a side plank and you can hold that side plank with your bottom knee down as well. Oh, and rest, 30 seconds. Okay, we're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna switch sides. We'll just alternate. So I'm just gonna move my mat this way so that I stay facing the camera. You guys obviously don't have to do that. All right, we're gonna start with that reverse grip row. So kneeling or standing if this bothers your knees. Slide the hips back, but neutral through the spine, okay? Palms face forward. Let's go. Three rows. Hold the third. Hold the third row, keeping those elbows bent at 90. Come up, squeeze the glutes. Hinge back. We'll drop down to one weight for the next exercise. It'll be in your right hand this time. Whew, okay, weight in the right hand, right foot on the glider, come to your high plank. We'll row on the right and we'll slide with the right knee. All right, square those hips, keep them level. You can have a wide stance, row. Right knee over to the left, across to the right, and then back. When you do that row, don't think of getting your elbow up as high as possible. Think of kind of rowing it back and up so you stay open through the chest. If the weight choice is too heavy, you can either come lower or come to a tabletop with the knees down. Oh, okay, so now your right foot steps forward, weight stays in the right hand. We're in this kind of open kneeling lunge position. Bicep curls isolating this right side. So you'll notice, keep going, but you'll notice my arm is against the inside of my thigh, but I'm not resting it on top of the thigh. So you can push in, but don't rest on top. Very normal to notice differences between the sides. Try not to swing. So notice is your body rocking forward and back. Don't do that. We're only doing two sets of these on each side. So you want it to be heavy. You want to really reach that point of fatigue by the end of the 45 seconds. Side plank up next, right form down. All right, weights down. Both feet go on the glider. So you can either make your towel long or you can put one foot on each. Right forearm down, left fingertips can be tented. Your feet are staggered, heels are lifted, toes are pointing to the side. So you can use this top left hand for support, absolutely. Advanced, you try reaching it up to the ceiling. So if there is a little rotation of your body towards the floor, if you're not completely in a side plank position, that's okay on this one. But I don't want you to be like this, unless your bottom shoulder needs support. If your bottom shoulder needs support, I want you to try to come to a regular forearm plank, stay twisted the low, through the lower half though, and do the slides from there. Oh, done. 30 seconds to rest. All right, we're halfway through our first circuit. We will alternate sides again. So don't mind me, I'm switching my mat. You guys don't have to worry about that. You can just change sides. All right, reverse grip row. 
<laughs> nice, perfect squeaky. <laughs> You're not in the way at all. Find that kneeling hinge position, slide the hips back, open through the chest. So there's that slight retraction of the shoulder blades. Three rows, they're slow and controlled. Hold the third one, come up. Now, when you come up, I don't want you to thrust the hips forward and lean back with the torso. So you need to think of engaging through the abdominals so that you're really stacked at the top. You'll probably almost feel like you're on the verge of teetering forward if you really come up to a true stack position. Like, look, my feet almost want to come up. That's because I'm front loaded with the weight. So big abdominal challenge. Woo, all right, put one weight down. Keep the weight on your left hand and your left foot is going to find the glider. Wide plank position. We'll do that row and then that cross body slide. Okay, we row on the left. And then your left knee is gonna slide to the right elbow, to the left elbow, and back. Hips are staying as square as possible to the floor during that row. Oh, all right, now bring that left foot forward, right knee down. So we're in this open lunge position, foot is open at an angle. You're gonna hinge forward, arm can be on the inside of the thigh, bicep curl. Squeaky right now is demonstrating the modification. Oh, nice. Squeaky, you're making me nervous. I don't want to drop the weight on him. I'm just going to turn. All right, weights down, side plank. Left forearm down, both feet on the glider. Mirror me. Feet are staggered. So right in front of left. Hips lifted to about shoulder height. And we slide those knees in and out. Last 45 seconds on this side, okay? Now you're staying really strong for this bottom shoulder, push the mat away. If this bottom shoulder needs more assistance than this top hand is providing, then again, square off your uh, torso, put both forearms on the floor. Now notice as the knees slide in, are you kind of sitting your butt down to your heels, okay? You don't wanna shift all the weight into your feet, so then keep it lifted, and maybe that means you don't slide the knees in quite as far. Oh, and done. Woo, 30 seconds to rest. All right, final time through. And then you are done with your first circuit. All right, reverse grip row. Final time through. We got this. If form is getting sloppy, drop down and wait, okay? Hinge at the hips. Engage the core, three rows. Squeaky, give me a break. Hold the third, come upright. Sweet, you're making me nervous. What if I hit you with a weight? Oh my God, now you move. <laughs> it's like working out in an obstacle course in my apartment. Ooh, 
All right, drop down to just one weight. It's going to stay in your right hand. Right foot is going to go on your glider. We find our wide high plank position. One row, one sliding cross body circle. Let's go. Right knee goes across to the left, over to the right, and back. If the row is getting to be too much, maybe you do two of the crossbody slides in between each row. Whew. Okay, right foot steps forward, left knee down. We're gonna do that single arm bicep curl, isolating our right side. Hinge forward with the torso, so the arm is on the inside the upper arms on the inside of that thigh. And then we curl. Don't swing the weight. Don't rock your body. You're almost there. Oh, weights go down. Right forearm comes down into our side plank. Both feet on the glider. Last 45 seconds. Let's do it. Right forearm down. Left fingertips can be tented. Staggered side plank, heels lifted, hips up at shoulder height. Bending the knees in, sliding them wide. Advanced, you take the support arm away. Keep those hips lifted. Almost there, you're so close to the end of this first circuit. You got it. Oh, and done. Woo, have some work. I right, have a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you our Tabata. No weights needed for our Tabata. First exercise is going to be a sliding push-up. So you're basically doing a push-up on one arm as the other arm slides out and draws back in. I'm gonna do that kneeling. If you have a really strong push-up though, and you're advanced, try it from your feet. And we'll just alternate sides each interval. We do that one. Second exercise, it is going to be a V-sit bent knees, straight legs, bent and straight. If you're super tight through the hamstrings and the hips though, maybe you just do bent knees the whole time. You'll notice arms reach forward when I'm doing bent knees, and then I'm bringing arms overhead when I do straight legs. If you're tight through the shoulders though, maybe you don't do overhead and maybe you leave the arms reaching forward the whole time. So you have a bunch of options with that one. We're gonna alternate between the two, eight rounds, 20 seconds on, 10 off. Let's do this. Okay, so it doesn't matter what side you start on, but I'm gonna have my right hand on the glider and my left hand on the floor to start. If the sliding push-ups aren't working for you, I just want you to do regular push-ups, all right? Forget the slider, both hands planted down, and just use the 20 seconds to work on your push-ups. Otherwise, right hand glider, spread out through the left hand, lower the hips, engage through the glutes. Right arm will slide long as you do a push-up on the left side. You lower and press back up. Inhale as you lower and slide out. Exhale as you press up and slide in. And maybe you're just going out a few inches to start and you gradually make it bigger and bigger. Woo, rest. All right, flip over onto your back. V-sit, bent knees, straight legs. So you're in an ab curl position to start. Arms are going to reach forward. Let's go. Exhale, bent knees behind the sitting bones. Straight legs, maybe arms reach overhead. Arms are only going as overhead as you can. 
without flaring open through the ribs. So if you're tight through the shoulders, don't worry if they don't come all the way up by your ears. Ooh, rest. Okay, flip over, other side. So now your left hand is gonna be on the glider, right hand on the floor if you're doing same side as me. Modified or if you're advanced, I want you on your feet. Let's go. I want you active through the glutes so that your hips aren't in this position, okay? We're open through the front of the hips. Glutes active. Whew. Flip onto your back. V up, bent knees, straight legs. I'm sorry if my dog is just totally messing up your view here. They run the show. Let's go. So you'll notice I'm really tight through the backs of my legs. So when I do straight legs, they're not coming up super high. That is fine. I want you to think about saying scoop through the lower spine, the lumbar spine, and saying tall through your upper and mid spine. Ooh. All right, halfway there, flip around. Right hand glider, left hand floor. Push up or modified push up position. Let's go. Flip onto your back, V sit, squeaky out of the way. Squeaky, come on. So there's a gentle nod of your chin, but make sure you're not jamming it down to your chest. Oh, rest, okay. One more round, each exercise, you got this. Left hand glider, right hand planted. Spread out through those hands, hands under shoulders to start. Let's go. Rest. Okay, final 20 seconds. V sit, let's go. Ab curl position, arms reach forward, legs at a hover, bent knees, bouncing behind the sitting bones, straight legs. And done, awesome work. I right, have a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you our lower body circuit. So I got rid of my mat for this one, um, but we will be in a bear plank position at one point. So you might wanna have it set up um, for your hands to be on. Just make sure you have room to slide. First exercise, it's going to be a staggered single leg deadlift to a sliding back lunge. I'm gonna encourage you to use both weights, but at any point, if it's too heavy, just use one weight and hold it in the opposite hand to whatever foot is stationary. Second exercise is kind of the continuation of that. It's gonna be just that sliding back lunge with a hold at the bottom while we do a knee slide in and out. Third move, we're gonna drop down to just one weight. It is gonna be a sliding curtsy lunge. At the bottom of that sliding curtsy lunge, you're gonna take your back leg, slide it into more of a side lunge position, slide it back to your curtsy, and then you rise up out of the lunge. To finish up, it is body weight. You're going to be in a single leg sliding plank position. It's gonna be a knee tuck into a bear plank. You're gonna pulse the hips up and down, and you're gonna straighten that leg back out. All right, four times through. I'm only gonna give you 10 seconds of transition time instead of 15 on this one because the exercises do flow more smoothly one to the next. All right, let's go. Let's start on our left leg since we started on the left for the first circuit. So left foot will be on the floor and your right foot is gonna be on the glider. You're gonna grab both weights. We have that staggered deadlift to our sliding back lunge. So you're gonna lift your back right heel up, square the hips. Right foot is just like six inches behind the left but feet are sitting bones distance apart. One staggered deadlift. And then back right leg is straight as we slide down in our low back lunge and to the top. One staggered deadlift, hip hinge, and lunge. So 
So while the two moves are different, think of initiating both with the hips sliding back, big hinge forward with the torso. Next exercise will just be sort of a building off of this one. We'll just do that sliding back lunge with a knee slide at the bottom. So don't take those 10 seconds of transition time as a break. We can just go right into it. I challenge you to do so. All right, so now it's just that sliding back lunge. And at the bottom, you're going to hold. Back right knee is gonna slide in. It's gonna slide straight, and then you come to the top. If it's too much holding both weights, then just hold the weight in your right hand, okay? Stay open through the chest. Shoulders are stacked over that front left knee at the bottom, so you're hinging forward with the torso without rounding the shoulders forward. We'll drop down to one weight up next, keeping the weight in our left hand. Okay, so you're gonna rack the weight on your left shoulder. Right foot is still on the glider. It's going to be a sliding curtsy lunge. So you're gonna slide the right behind the left. At the bottom, you're going to take this right leg, extend it out to the right. Now you're in this sort of low side lunge position. Bend the knee back into that curtsy and then slide up to the top. So you take it down, back knee is bent, straighten it out, bend it back to your curtsy and come up. If this is not challenging enough for you, then by all means, hold both weights. Whew, okay, body weight. Now switch which foot is on the glider, okay? Left foot is going to be on the glider. Hands come down to the floor. You're in a plank position. Your right knee is crunched in towards your chest. Single leg knee tuck into bear plank. Pulse the hips up and down. And then straighten that left leg back out. Bend it in under your hips. Lift the hips up and down. Straighten it out. To modify this one, I want you to hook your right foot on the left heel instead of having it hovering like I'm demonstrating now. And that is gonna help a bunch, okay? Otherwise, it's crunched and out of hover. When you straighten out that leg to a plank, really squeeze the quads. Whew. 30 seconds to rest. Okay, I'm gonna start that from the top, other leg. So right leg is gonna be your base leg, left foot will be on the glider. We'll grab both weights. We'll start with that staggered deadlift, sliding back lunge combo. Okay, plant on through that right foot. Back left heel is lifted, staggered deadlift. Weights by your shins, squeeze the glutes to the top. One sliding back lunge. So that back knee is bent when you do the staggered deadlift. The leg is straight when we do the sliding back lunge. We'll go right into the next exercise. It'll be that sliding back lunge with a knee pull at the bottom. Let's go. Slide to your low lunge. Back right knee, or sorry, left knee draws in and out. Stamp your right foot into the floor to come up to the top. Try to keep your hips square. So you might need to think of pulling the right hip back a little bit left hip forward a little bit, especially as you do that knee slide. Sometimes the hips want to twist open. We'll drop down to one weight after this. Whew. 
Okay, keep the weight in your right hand. You're gonna rack it on your shoulder. Right foot is planted, left foot is on the glider. We're gonna do that sliding curtsy. So I do it with my back left knee bent, whoop, as I hit my couch, bent, and then staying low, kick it straight. Slide it back, and then come out of the curtsy. If it works better for your hips to do a straight leg curtsy with that back leg, I'm okay with that, okay? Stay light on that back left foot so my heel is lifted. Whew, weights down. So now your right foot is gonna go on that glider Hands come to the floor. Left knee is crunched in, in the single leg plank position. Tuck the knee into bear plank, so tabletop. Lift the hips up a few inches, down a few inches. Straighten out the leg, firing through the quads. Bend it in. Now don't bend it in too far, okay? You're bringing that knee under your hips. You're not crunching it in all the way under your chest. If you do that, you have too much weight in the foot. Again, modification, hook the hovering left foot on your right ankle, it's gonna help a lot. Oh, rest. Okay, we're halfway there. We're gonna start back at the top with that left leg as the focus. Left leg is base, follow the right foot on your glider, stagger deadlift, square the hips, feet sitting bones distance apart, stagger deadlift, slide the hips back, you unlock through the knees, but it's not a squat, come to the top, fire the glutes at the top, and then one sliding back lunge. When you come up out of that back lunge, think of creating the upward movement by stamping your left foot down into the floor. Push that foot into the floor. You can always drop down to just a single weight if needed. You would hold the one in your right hand. Woo. All right, so now it's just that sliding back lunge and we're gonna add in the knee pull at the bottom. So when you're in your low lunge, slide the right knee in without transferring too much weight into it, straighten it out and then come out of that lunge. Try to prevent any rotation through the pelvis as you do that knee slide at the bottom, which can be tricky. Because as that back right knee pulls forward, that hip wants to kind of come forward as well. Keep the weight in your left hand, rack it on your shoulder. Right foot still on the glider. Curtsy, we'll slide out to that side lunge. So sliding curtsy, and then kick that right leg out to the right. Take it back to your curtsy, and then come up. All right, now what I want you to focus on as you do that sweep is this stationary left knee. As little wobbling as possible. It's gonna be tough. But I want that knee tracking in line with your middle toes. So engagement through your foot is going to help. Really make sure you're grounded down through that big toe. To modify this one, ditch the weight, just do it body weight. If curtsy lunges bother your knees, then just do a side lunge, okay? So you do this. All right, ditch the weight, 
come down to the floor. Now switch which foot is on the glider. Left foot glider, single leg plank position. Right knee is crunched into your chest. Slide into your bear plank. We lift the hips. We lower the hips to a hover. We straighten out that leg, squeezing through the quad. Modification, hook your right on the left ankle. I know this one is really hard. Last time you have to do it on this side. Almost there. Oh, 30 seconds to rest. Okay, one more time through the circuit. You got this. Right leg will be the focus. Oh. Pickles wanted to join us for this last round. <laughs> Grab your weights, right foot on the floor, left foot on your glider, staggered deadlift to sliding back lunge. Let's go. That left foot is a little behind the right, okay? Staggered deadlift, slide those hips back. Bring them up. Slide to the bottom of your lunge. Stamp that right foot into the floor to make your way to the top again. Keep the weights in close to your shin when you do that deadlift. Okay, just the sliding back lunge, knee pull at the bottom. Left knee draws in, left leg straightens out, stamp your right foot into the floor to come to the top. Keep reaching your hips back. So the right knee is pretty much stacked directly over your left heel on this one. Oh, keep the weight in your right hand. Rack it on your shoulder. Mirroring me, we're gonna do that sliding curtsy into our side lunge. Let's go. Left sweeps behind right. Left kicks out to the side. We cross. We come to the top. I'm gonna have to do this one from the side so I have more space. Trying to maintain a stable pelvis and a stable knee as we slide from side to side which is gonna be tricky. If it is a better grip for you to hold the weight in both hands at the, your center chest, that is an option too, okay? Keep reaching the hips back. Okay, weights down. You got it guys, final 45 seconds. Switch which foot is on the glider. Right foot glider, left knee hovering. Spread out through your hands. Find that single leg plank position. Let's go. Slide the right knee into bear plank. Hips lift up, hips lower to a hover. Straight out your left leg, squeezing through the quad. You got it, stick with it. So close to the end of the circuit. Oh, and done. Awesome work. Okay, you have a minute to recover. 
I'm gonna show you our final Tabata, okay? Last four minutes of work. No glider needed for this final Tabata. First exercise, it's a heavy squat pulse. So you're gonna rack both weights on your shoulders, you're in your low squat, you're gonna pulse up and down. To modify that one, use just one weight, hold it at your chest instead of using both. Second exercise is gonna be a squat hop, then an explosive squat jump. If you wanna keep that one low impact, then it would just be an air squat with a pulse at the bottom. Down, little pulse, stand. Down, little pulse, stand. And I'll have that modification playing in the corner. Okay, we're gonna alternate between the two. Final four minutes of work. Let's do it. All right, you're gonna grab both heavies, rack them on your shoulders, low squat, we're gonna pulse it out the bottom. Let's do this. So knees tracking with middle or even pinky toes, okay? Don't let them collapse in, you find your low squat. 20 seconds pulsing up and down. Staying engaged through your back body so that you stay open through the chest. Push the feet into the floor as you pulse up and down. Whew. Okay, weights go down. Now it's going to be a squat hop, squat jump. Let's go. Little hop, get some air. Little hop, make it big. Oh, rest, grab those weights. Rack them on your shoulders. You're gonna find your low squat position. We pulse it out. Let's go. You got it. If you need to mix in a full squat and come all the way up for a second, do it and then get right back down. Rest. Weights go down. All right. Squat hop, squat jump. Let's go. A little hop, get some air. Remember that modification? You can always take out the jumping. I'd rather you tone it down a notch and do that than to stop altogether. Oh, halfway there. Grab those two heavies. Rack them on your shoulders. Low squat position. And let's pulse. Up a couple inches, down a couple inches. Hips are reaching back. Knees gently pressing out. Gauge the abdominals. Open through the chest. Rest, put the weights down. Squat hop, squat jump. And go. Uh, rest, okay. Final set. Grab those weights. Heavy squat pulses. Last time each exercise, we got this. Oh man, I'm dying. Let's go. Down to the bottom. Up a couple inches. Down a couple inches. Use just one weight if two is too much. Ugh. Rest, ditch the weights, hop, jump, final 20. We can do it. Let's go. I don't even wanna know what my facial expressions are right now. Right to the end. Oh man, done. Oh, awesome, awesome work. Take a second to catch your breath. 
Grab a drink of water if you need it. I'm going to bring you through a quick cool down. Oh, man. Let's start with a standing quad stretch. If you need some help with balance, you can always put your hand on something. Grab your right foot, heel into your bum, and then make sure your pelvis is neutral. So think of kind of dropping the tailbone down. Ooh, that was tough. Let's switch it over to the other side. We're gonna forward fold up next. If you're still super out of breath and your heart rate's really high though, you might wanna wait a second before for, uh, folding forward. I don't want you to get dizzy. But if you're feeling good, we're gonna take a nice wide stance with our legs, toes point forward. Send the hips back and fold. Plant your right hand in the center and let's twist open, left arm to the ceiling. Maybe you stay here, maybe you bend that left elbow, bring your hand behind your back. Little shoulder stretch here. All right, let's come back through center, other side. Left hand plants, right arm twists open. Maybe you bend the elbow, bring the hand behind your back. Any tension in your neck, just make sure your neck isn't more twisted than your thoracic spine. So you might just shift your gaze down slightly. Now bringing both hands in through center, we're gonna walk our hands over to the right, pivoting, bending into this right knee. So we're kind of in a lizard lunge position. We're gonna come into a down dog, take the right leg up to the ceiling as the hips go up, and then open up through the hips. So peel that right hip open, stacking it on top of the left and bend that knee. We're gonna come into a half pigeon stretch up next. If you know that's a little too intense for you, you can do a figure four stretch laying on your back instead. Otherwise though, let's square the hips. And then as you come forward, you're going to bring that right knee behind the right um, wrist. That's the word I'm looking for. Kick the shin across. Walk your left leg back and we come into our half pigeon. You might want to prop your right hip up on a pillow or a block. It just depends on your hips. As we breathe here, think of inhaling through the nose. Send that breath to where you're feeling tension. Exhale, think of releasing. Stay here longer if it's feeling good. If you're ready to switch sides though, we'll press up to straight arms. We'll tuck the back left toes under. We'll lift our hips up into down dog and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So you're gonna lift your left leg up, open up through the hips. So peel the left hip on top of the right and bend the knee. And then when you're ready, we're gonna square off through the hips, left knee behind left wrist, kick the shin across. Walk your right leg back and you can lower yourself down to your forearms, half pigeon other side. Again, inhaling through the nose, exhaling, melting into the position. We're gonna finish in a seated position. You can transition through plank or you can just roll to the outside of that left hip and bring your right leg forward. Let's finish cross-legged. Just one deep breath together. Inhale, arms are gonna reach up. And exhale, release. Awesome work today, that is your class.